In this week's episode, step one on the restoration project for the Trillium Travel Trailer. So stick around. For those of you who wish to tow a travel trailer behind your Jeep, I think that this Trillium Travel Trailer is an excellent choice because it has a lot of amenities and it's very light. And if you want to do a restoration project, you could pick up one of these for very little money. And then should you change your mind, you could always sell this and get at least your money back. But now let's talk about what are the initiatives I'm going to undertake to restore this trailer. You'll know from my initial video when I introduced this trailer that I had to clean it up a lot just so I could work with it. But now it's time to seal it up. The first thing I'm going to do is seal up the roof vent and the windows as well as the belly band and repair the hinges. Once I've done all those jobs, the trailer will be weatherproof and I can begin the work on the inside. So in this episode, the first thing I'm going to do is fix the hinges on that door so that I could get in and out without it falling off. Okay, so you can see that I've already started on repair of the belly band and I'll cover that in a separate video. For this video, we're going to focus on repairing these hinges. Now, you know that saying, it's being held on by a thread. In this case, it's like a thread of a screw that's just hanging on. Let me demonstrate. So I guess I have my work cut out for me. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so you can see here that in the body of the trailer itself, there's a block of wood here and the wood inside the trailer here has rotted such that the threads of the screws pull out. So there's a few ways that you could fix this. One way to do it is do some surgery on the inside of the trailer and re-epoxy a chunk of wood here. I've seen some people cut this chunk out and repair the wood that way. And then the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to determine that there is still enough wood other than where the screws were and I'm going to drill out these holes and epoxy some new wood dowels. Now that might not be considered a more full-time fix, but I need it fixed now and I want to get on with the other repairs before the black flies come. So I'm just going to put in some new dowels epoxied into these spaces so I could re-screw the door into place. And here you can see similarly there's a block of wood behind this piece of fiberglass and these screws here are held in place pretty well but over here it's loose so I'm going to attempt the same idea where I'll put dowels in the holes epoxied in so that this could be tightened more securely. So a careful inspection with a pick tool lets me know that there's wood surface all the way around this hole. So it's not like all of the wood block has deteriorated in here, but just from moisture getting in where the screw goes in, it had helped rot the wood around the threads. So I'm gonna drill a hole that'll fit some new doweling in here with epoxy. And then I could pilot hole where I'm gonna have the new screws go in. But you can see here, this little pick is detecting wood all the way around, and it seems not bad. This is a little bigger than I'd like, but I think that'll work in that scenario. And similarly down here, I could feel wood all the way around here. Uh, it looks like there is some kind of fiberglass exposed here. Maybe the gel coat and a bit of epoxy has chipped off here. But what I'm going to do, once I put in the dowels so that the screws will have something to bite into, I'm going to use butyl tape between the hinge and the trailer to stop further moisture from being able to get into the repair. But you can see there's lots of wood in here. So the dowel and some epoxy might be a good fix for here. Okay, let's get started. And as I explained for the door, this hinge is on nice and snug but I'll be removing these screws and putting butyl tape behind it that way it'll make sure there's a good seal here so no moisture can go and promote rot of the wood here and then on the hinge down here just take this screw out so we can see what we're working with 
Yep. And just like I thought, there's still wood nearby. So when I drill a bigger hole to fit the dowel in here with some epoxy, that'll give the new screws something to bite into. And then I'll put butyl all around this area so that when I secure the hinge back onto here, there won't be moisture being able to get in and cause that problem again. But while I'm at it, I'm going to take this hinge off just to see what the condition of the screws are here because I'm going to be applying butyl to make sure that this doesn't get subjected to the moisture that has caused this problem. So let's have a look. Wow, you can see how the corrosion of that screw has caused all the threads to disappear. So it was only being held on by a thread like I was kind of saying earlier. <laughs> So just these last couple threads is what was holding the hinge on for this screw. So I'm imagining that over time this is the same condition for all these screws. So they're all going to be replaced and the holes are going to be filled with epoxy and a dowel so that I'll have fresh wood to bite into. And so yeah, I'll just take the rest of this hinge off and start the repair. Some corrosion on the end here. So there. If you have a close look, the threads have really eroded away or rusted away. So I'm glad that I'm going to be replacing everything here and putting butyl to give it a, a, a new lease on life. Okay, so the dowel that I chose to buy is a 7 16 inch wide dowel and I have a half inch or 8 16 inch wide drill bit. And so I'll just go and drill a hole as deep as necessary in each of these holes right here. And then I'll epoxy in the dowel into those holes. And I'll make sure I cut this dowel into the appropriate depth. And then once that's all said and done, I'll just smooth this over with a little bit of sanding. And I'll do the same down here. So I'm gonna be careful here in that if there is some wood still behind this hole, I just want to put the dowel that deep. I don't want to go all the way through the wood block if I don't need to because it gives the dowel something to hang on to. And this hole is maybe a half inch deep. And that one's maybe one inch deep. And that one's about a half inch deep. So this one's a little deeper. So what I'm gonna do is drill the hole appropriately in terms of the depth, just drilling down as deep as I need to go because I want to maintain that wood that's behind there for some support if there is any back there. So for example, when we look down here, there's just a little bit and I can actually get past it and hit the fiberglass on the other side. So I may have to go all the way in it looks like maybe an inch and a half and that one there looks like an inch and three quarters and this one I can't get into it at all so I may not have to go too deep into here so I'll just drill the appropriate depth hole so that when I epoxy in the dowel it's got as much support as possible so when I determine that depth I just match it to the drill and put a piece of tape and that way I know I'm not going to go all the way through So that looks like uh, I got rid of a lot of the rotted wood in there. Clean up this edge here and sand that a bit later. I know it looks like it's really soft and rotted, but when I poke into the side here, it is still pretty hard. And I think when I put in the epoxy and the dowel, it'll do the trick. And later on, if I wanted to, I may end up approaching from the back and replacing that whole piece of wood later. But in order to get on with the project, I need to secure this this way for now. I should put on a mask. Actually, before I start any further, always make sure you have some eye protection. And if there's going to be a lot of fiberglass or dust floating around, it's wise to wear a mask as well. Okay. So you can see I'm hitting some solid wood here. So 
so that's about as deep as I'll go for that. So another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I sand the dowel so that the epoxy has something to bite to. And then I'm going to take my pick tool and just widen the base of these holes so that the epoxy kind of can anchor into that space. So what I've done now is I've gone and taped off the areas that I'm going to work on for the hinges and I'm going to sand down the gel coat surface here because after I epoxy the dowels into these holes I'm also going to put one layer of fiberglass cloth with the epoxy resin to just strengthen this surface a little bit. So the sanding will help the bond and the fiberglass will just give this area a little more strength. So I'm just going to use my little job max tool to do the sanding. Don't forget the mask. The epoxy system that I used was the West System 105 epoxy with the West System 206 slow cure hardener as well as some acetone and paper towels to wipe up any spilled epoxy. I used a foam brush to try and feed the epoxy into the holes but in retrospect if I had a syringe it would have been better. And once that was done I simply dipped the dowels into some epoxy and then put them into the holes. Any epoxy that oozed out I just spread over the surface because I would then take a sheet of fiberglass that was pre-cut to the shape and just dabbed it on top and made sure that I put more epoxy on top to get rid of any air bubbles and soak that fiberglass cloth. I repeated the process at all parts of the hinge contact points on the door and the trailer and then I gave it a final sanding. And then of course after sanding make sure you wipe down all the surfaces with some acetone to clear up any dust or grease and you're ready to start mounting the door. This is when you need an extra hand to help hold the door and use some spacers to help align the door perfectly. With your helper holding it in place, you can then align the hinges and do some pilot holes for your screws. With the top hinge in place, you could check your door for alignment before you drill your pilot holes for the bottom hinge. And when everything's all set, you could put your butyl tape in between and screw it down. Thank you, Claude. Let's do these ones.
Well, it feels pretty good to have the first step done. The door is now secure. It won't fall off when I need to use the trailer or especially when I'm towing. I'm pretty happy with all the gaps being pretty even all the way around and the hinges seem very secure and even the belly band seems lined up pretty nice. So hopefully you found that interesting. Now let's take a look at our tip segment. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. In this week's tip segment, I just want to give you a tip on purchasing epoxy resin, for example, as I purchased the West System epoxy resin. On the forums, they recommend that you go to a marine shop where they'll have specialty items such as this, as well as the fiberglass cloth. What I found, and it does depend on where you go, the marinas may charge a premium. For example, here is the price of the 206 hardener at a marina, and then in contrast, here is the price of the same 206 hardener that I was able to purchase at home hardware. So you can see the price difference is significant. Now the same thing also occurred for the epoxy resin as well as the pump system that the 105 system offers for the dispensing of their epoxy and their hardener. So I would encourage you to definitely check out your local box stores before you go and check out a marina. I'll also have links to the similar products as found on Amazon. And now let's hear what our subscribers have to say. And now for subscribers tips. This week we have another tip from our Easy Flare installation video. Hey Jeeper Jeeper TV, I also use black silicone sealer to help the ends stay attached. Signed, Dave. Hey Dave, thank you so much for the tip. I noticed that with my installation, there are the rivets right near the end, so a tip like this will certainly help. And if you have any tip that you'd like to share, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below as they may make it in a future episode. Thank you very much. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it interesting. And if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up? And if you're new to the channel, please feel free to click on the subscribe button and the alert bell so you'll be notified when the next video is released. Till next week, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.